Hello everyone, my name is Jerry from Jerry Loves Freedom. I am a avid, avid uh, silver stacker, as you can see, and I love Bitcoin. I'm all about freedom. I read the United States Constitution every single day, uh, the Declaration of Independence, and I'm a, I'm a patriot and a veteran of the United States of America. And I'm all about freedom, as you can see in my name. So if you're new to the channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe. So I am going to react to one of my absolute favorite people, and Andrew Tate. Now, uh, if you guys haven't been living under a rock, you know what happened to him. He was locked up for 92 days for absolutely nothing. He didn't even get charged with anything. Now, I'm not saying he's not uh, guilty or innocent or whatever. I wasn't there. I don't know. All I do know is, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of evidence. Let's just say the grape charge got dropped and, you know, now he's on house arrest. So this is him doing a Tate speech. Now, he does these about once a week on Rumble. Because he, you know, he's banned from YouTube. Of course, he's banned from everywhere. And uh, this is him immediately after the interview he had with the BBC, the BBC. Excuse me. And if you haven't seen that, uh, he'll show clips throughout it. And they, just, it was just an absolute hit job, just like they, just like what happened in, in the Vice uh, interview he did. Uh, I think it was last year. Uh, <laughs> again, man, if the, if, the, if the legacy liberal media is against you and they want to smear you, you're doing something right. So. Let's take a look at the legend, uh, Andrew Tate, as he talks about what his, <laughs> what his future plans are with the liberal media. In the interest of saving absolutely everybody's time, Saving everybody's time. Meanwhile, he's smoking a cigar for 20 seconds. <laughs> this guy's a legend, man. <laughs> I feel like doing a generalized statement to all legacy media inside of the Matrix. And I'm doing it to save their time and mine, as well as protect the minds of the masculine youth for the future. I want to make it very clear that the legacy media, which I enjoyed the company of today, have made a massive mistake and missed a chance to do some genuinely interesting journalism. After being unfairly incarcerated in a Romanian dungeon, I thought that even the BBC, in its absolute arrogance and hubris, would be smart enough to come to me after six months being the first interview I gave to The Matrix and be smart enough to ask questions people were genuinely interested in. What's it like inside of a Romanian prison cell? How were you treated? Why was a person's liberty deprived of them for six months without charge? How is your mental state post your unfair incarceration? Things people are genuinely interested in hearing. Yeah, all good questions. I would have I loved to hear that on the, on the legacy lamestream media, but of course you're not going to hear that. You know what I mean? They want to they wanna spin it and paint the picture they, they want you to hear. And this is why, again, I believe the legacy media is going away with Twitter and everything else. But, uh, yeah, good points. Those, those, are, those would be great questions if you were a real journalist and a real uh, news network. But obviously, you know they're not. But instead, they came with the same old talking points. And I'd like to address all of these talking points to the Matrix media now to prevent this happening again. Because it's a monumental waste of everybody's time. I say things on the Internet. I've been making content on the internet for a very long time. Finding a clip from 2016, eight years ago, finding a four hour long podcast from 2016, ignoring all context, ignoring everything positive I say about men and women and the world, and taking a single sentence and trying to pretend that's my entire worldview is not the bombshell you think it is. Nobody cares. Everybody understands what satire is. Everybody understands what a joke is. Everybody understands it's the internet. Everybody understands all of these things. Plus, the people who know the truth of my message are very capable of understanding what is satirical and what is true. People are not as stupid as you'd like them to be. And that's the whole point. They want to keep us stupid. They want to keep us ignorant and dumb and not knowing what's going on. That's their, that's their strength. This is why I make these videos. This is why I love Andrew Tate, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, freedom fighters out here saying, you know what, the legacy media is lying to us by keeping us stupid and uninformed. Sitting down with me and missing the chance to have a genuinely interesting interview with genuinely interesting questions that people are interested in hearing the answers to, and instead attempting this attack 
to get this bombshell aha moment is never going to work because one, I'm too smart for all of you. And two, nobody cares. Nobody cares. I made a joke eight years ago because everybody knows I was joking and everybody knows the truth of my message. So you're wasting absolutely everybody's time. The lamestream media period is a waste of time. It is an absolute waste of time. Fox, CNN, MSNBC, the BBC, whatever, you name it. It's all a waste of time. Worse than wasting everybody's time, what you're genuinely doing is damaging the minds of young men. And I think I have a responsibility as one of the most influential men on the planet to protect the minds of young men and all of the men who look up to me. Nobody, no young man below the age of 30 has any interest in what the BBC or the legacy media say. They don't care and they don't watch it unless I appear on there. So when I sit across from a reporter who says that having a nice car makes you a misogynist, it's disingenuous. And also, also, financial it's success correct. with a Bugatti and a cigar, but it comes with a side order of misogyny. How does having a Bugatti and a cigar come with misogyny? Because it's all mixed together in what you teach. And on a side note, <laughs> this is crazy. I watched that entire interview. Andrew Tate is so smart. He's a, he's a chess player, by the way, and he has a very, very high IQ. And he's very successful. You guys know that. The entire interview, I believe, was like 38 minutes. He had the people come to his house because he's on house arrest. He recorded the whole thing, right? It was 38 minutes. They cut it down to 12 minutes because he knows what they'll do. They'll chop it up. They'll ask a question. Then they'll put a different answer in to the other question and chop his words up and move his words around. So what he did was, before the interview came out, he put it out on his on his channel in entirety because he knew what they were going to do. And he did. they did exactly what he did. And if you look at it, the BBC not only took it down on a bunch of places, some places they turned the comments off, but the one place I went to, they turned the comments on, they were just roasting the BBC on it. You know what I mean? I highly suggest, I highly suggest you watch that entire video. It's absolutely sickening, man, what they did to this guy. Absolutely. I find that to be extremely dangerous rhetoric. I find that to be extremist rhetoric. And I think it's very dangerous for young men to think if they work hard for something in their lives, if they dedicate themselves and they're diligent and hardworking and they try hard, that they'll be a bad person. I hate the idea of a world where a man who dedicates himself to excellence so he can enjoy the finer things in life is criticized and ostracized and called horrible names purely because he's been a hardworking male. And I don't like young men hearing these extremist ideas. And they're only going to hear these extremist ideas if they watch the BBC, which is an extremist organization. And they're only going to watch the BBC if I talk to the BBC. So I feel like now that these people have proved themselves to be extremist, and very damaging to the minds of young men, I have an obligation to not interact with them very much because I don't want them spreading their extremist propaganda. I don't either, Andrew. And let me say this as a black man, the most ostracized, uh, oppressed person on the planet right now is a, is a white male. It just is. And it's, it, it, it's absolutely crazy what the legacy media is doing. And then if you're a black person, they want to paint you out as a victim and the white man is bad. You know, and that's just one of many uh, things that they do. But if you're a white male, I can't speak for overseas, but if you're a white male in America, you're public enemy number one. We have a men's mental health crisis. Young men are disenfranchised. The suicide rate amongst men is much higher than women. And everybody pretends to care. But when I come along and say, I am a man, I've been a man, I know how it feels to be a sad man and a happy man, and I found happiness through masculine achievement and strength, through working hard in the gym, through dedicating myself, through building a life worth living, through taking care of the people who I love, both male and female, through becoming financially successful, through sticking up for myself, through having opinions, through being a man of honor and courage. When I do these things, I'm ostracized and they're attempting to destroy my life. This goes beyond a few media interviews. They are attempting to put me in jail and destroy my life because I am helping young men. They don't care about men's mental health. They have no interest at all. In fact, the ideas they purport, like I've just explained, are genuinely damaging to the mindset of young men. And that's exactly why they locked him up for 92 days, by the way, with no charges. Again, I don't know if he was guilty or innocent. I don't know. I wasn't there. But they had no charges. Now, he's not in America. I know he's in Romania. But can you imagine the cops coming into your house, arresting you and taking you in and saying, we're going to arrest you and detain you, but we're not going to charge you with anything. 
All the stuff that he just said, working out, you know, being a good person, being a man of faith in God, taking care of your family and your friends, being an honorable person and going out here and telling the truth. Because the truth is, is the new is the new enemy now because they tell nothing but lies. And that's exactly why they locked him up. And that's exactly why I love this guy, man. He is an absolute legend, man. On top of this, they waste everybody's time because their aha moment never works. Nobody's interested in it. And I destroy them with ease. But my hourly rate is high. It's not very fun for me to do. I just do it. It has to be done, but I don't particularly enjoy it. I allowed you into my home. I'm, I'm doing you a favor, giving you the first interview I'm giving to the public. You don't come here with a position of authority. You're not the police. I don't respect the BBC. I don't know you. You do not come here with a position of authority over me. We are equals. We are people. We're citizens of the world, and we sit here as equals. And I see you as my equal, and if you ask me questions, I can ask you questions back. For you to come here and sit down and pretend you're the Gestapo, and that you don't have to answer my questions is, is disingenuous because I don't owe you anything. You're asking questions and you answer But I don't owe, no, however you want. this is a conversation and I don't owe you any degree of authority over me. So let's make that clear. And that doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or from the BBC or the CNN. I'm here to you answer your say. questions and be honest with you and do you a favor. Great. But, and I'm doing you a favor, but you come here with loaded questions. You're trying to paint a narrative of me, which is negative. I'm asking you and about that's things you said that people are concerned about. And that's fine. You but you're not going to sit here and say you don't answer my questions because you're not above me. Preach, Andrew. And that was, the, that was the whole interview. This woman came in with a nasty look on her face. First of all, she didn't even do her hair. She just, she was unprofessional. All she did was have a have, uh, paper with a bunch of quotes and stuff. He said she didn't do any research at all. I, I'm not going to fully blame her, even though I, I, I blame her a lot. Okay. She's the agent of the matrix, right? She was, she was there to do a job, which is evil. She, she is an evil person for doing that, but she was there to completely and utterly uh, destroy, try to destroy his uh, credibility and, and everything he stands for. It, it was sickening to listen to that. You thought Donald Trump's interview with uh, Dylan Mulvaney, I mean, the other lady, because <laughs> they look alike, was bad. This was 10 times worse. I'm serious. And she and they lied to him. They told him, hey, you know, we're going to have a list of questions for you, begging him, begging him for the interview, finally come in there and try to destroy him. And guess what happened? That at the end of the video, you'll see the last question because he just completely destroyed her. She couldn't say anything. She was so angry that when they walked out, he says, hey, no problem. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. He puts his hand out to shake her hand. She doesn't even shake her shake his hand and walk away. And what do Tristan, his, his younger brother, say on Twitter? Hey, guys, listen, do not mess with this lady. She's just doing her job. This, that, and the third. You know, all listen, there's nothing bad to say about these people. Um, the, the, the two brothers that I know about that I've been doing research on everybody says they're the nicest guys They're this and that do they joke around? You know, do they have a lot of women? Sure. Nobody's perfect, but I mean for them to do that I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I'd have been I would have been a lot more ruder to that lady after that He's a better man than me. And this is why I learned a lot of different things from a lot of different people, but uh This guy man, I It's crazy what they did to him man, but I digress so in the interest of spreading good and positivity in the world, which is my number one objective, I, have make, I am making this clear to all legacy media outlets. I will no longer interact with you for free. Nobody cares that you lie about me and nobody cares what you say. You have destroyed all of your credibility in the last four years of constantly lying about everything. And continuing to lie about me will only destroy your credibility further. I have an organization called Tape Pledge, which you can see. Go to CobraTape.com and click at Tape Pledge and you will see that I dedicate $25 million a year to feeding children, both male and female, in war-torn countries. Let me give you some context on that real quick. I don't want you to think that he's bragging, saying, oh, I spend $25 million a year on charities. First of all, two things. Number one, he's been doing this for years, okay? Before he came on the internet, he didn't have to do this. He didn't have to come on the internet and do it. He did it to try to help young men. He's helped me. I'm 12 years older than the guy. He's helped me. That's number one. Number two, the only reason he's saying this is because other people came out and told that he did that. When he was in, in prison for 92 days, for no reason, by the way, people started telling things that he was doing because they were trying to attack his character. And now that it's out and people know about it, now he's like, okay, well, I might as well talk about it. He never told anybody about that. I don't care how much money you're making. $25 million a year and he's evil and that's a bad guy? Come on now. I would like to think that even the legacy media can agree that feeding children in Sudan or Turkish children after an earthquake, or Syrian children in refugee camps, is a pretty positive thing to do for the world. In my last BBC interview, she tried to spin it and say that what I'm doing is somehow negative because I'm only doing it for myself. But this is the level of delusion these people operate under. Because some people would look at that and say, okay, so before 
you got money from attracting people to your website by making controversial comments, but that might have got you into trouble. And so now you're looking for a new market. You're looking for a new market of followers who are attracted by a different sort of persona. I've always done the charity work, so that is obviously incorrect. And I have proof that I've always done the charity work, so you're wrong. Exactly, Andrew. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Because they just had a list of things to say bad about him, didn't do any research. If you want to see a real interview with Andrew Tate, look at the one Tucker Carlson did with him. That was great. Pierce Morgan, he... Uh, I watched that one too. I like Pierce. I got a love hate relationship with Pierce Morgan. That's for another video. Watch the one he did with with uh, Tucker Carlson. And again, this is why another reason I don't watch Fox News because they got rid of Tucker Carlson. You know what I mean? That just shows you where they're at, man. It's crazy. Tate Pledge is funded 100% by me. This is my personal money. But I believe if the legacy media is intent on spreading hate, intent on spreading extremist ideologies, which it seems they are. Not only the extremist ideology that men shouldn't work hard, but also a bunch of other ones which I don't need to mention because most thinking people understand what the legacy media is trying to purport on not only the population, but the young children of the world. And what they are trying to push is far more damaging than me saying you should go to the gym. And on a side note, uh, this is Pride Month, formerly known as June. I'm glad he showed that, that video, that clip. If you think for one minute that all the stuff that's going on with Pride Month and everything else is just about them and not the other stuff that I can't really say. I got a bridge to say, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about an agenda and grooming. Okay, we, we know this. That's why I would never shop at Target again. Therefore, I no longer have any interest with interacting with the legacy media for free because I don't want their extremist views shown to young children without doing some good for the world. My fee. Drum roll, please from this point onwards, is $50,000 and a box of chocolates. For reference, the, <laughs> the box of chocolates is not from Forrest Gump, okay? My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. That's not what it's for. He's trolling the guy from Vice, okay? He did that about a month ago. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description box, or I'll, I'll put a clip in right here. Would you, would you bring me a box of chocolates? I can bring you a box of chocolates. If you promise to bring me a box of chocolates, that will increase your chances. And I'll give you an answer within 24 hours. But you have to promise me, Matt. Don't lie to me. I'll, I'll check with my superiors whether I can send you a box of chocolates. Well, then you check with your boss. You go into your boss's room and ask if you're allowed to spend a large portion of your salary on a five pound box of chocolates. And you let me know. And if you can, then I will strongly consider allowing you the opportunity to speak with me. Are you asking all the journalists to bring you a box of chocolates? You let me know about the chocolates, Matt. Have a nice day. Okay. What Matt doesn't know is that because he's a dishonest journalist, if he agrees to the chocolates, I'll agree to the interview. But I'm not gonna show up. What we're gonna do is record him standing around waiting for an interview with my box of chocolates. <laughs> you see, isn't the world beautiful? Vice do a hit piece on Tate. Tate goes to jail. We got him. Release the hit piece. He's in jail. He's never getting out. God releases me. Vice, Matt, BBC, whoever, Matrix agent number 399 begs for another interview. And I end up with chocolates. It's kind of like I never lose. Hello, Matt. I can bring you a box of chocolates. That's great. Here we are. See, I went to jail. Everyone said Tate's over. His life's done. He's going to go to jail. Turns out I was totally innocent. I've been let free. And now I get chocolates from Vice. Life's looking good. From the BBC. Oh, even from the BBC is even better. They've got bigger budgets. Don't, yeah. let, don't let me down, Matt. Don't be cheap. Um, so, when works for you? How soon can you get the chocolates? I'm pretty hungry. Um, assume, assuming the chocolates are procured, what day is it today? Tuesday? Yeah, Friday, Saturday, something like that. Assuming the chocolates are ready. Okay, let me talk to my lawyer and I'll get back to you. Okay, great. Hopefully see you soon. Hopefully. Alright. <laughs> Please, can I have another interview? Please. <laughs> Gay! <laughs> we didn't understand you, man. <laughs> 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 Woo!
So I spoke with Andrew. He said he's tired right now. Okay. And like uh, to give him his chocolate. Give him his chocolate. Yep. Okay. Well, can you tell him we can give it to him once we're sat down to do the interview? Uh, he wants the chocolate now. He wants the chocolate now. Yep. Okay. Because uh, I'm a little bit worried that he's just gonna, you know, brag about us bringing him chocolate on Twitter and not actually do the interview. What he did to that guy from Vice was absolutely legendary, man. Because that guy from Vice uh, completely tried to destroy him and spin it and everything else. This guy is, this guy is the genius, man. <laughs> that is what it is gonna cost you to speak to me. If you are from the Matrix, you will give me $50,000 in advance, which will be donated to Take Pledge, which will be used to feed children in war-torn countries. And you will also bring a box of chocolates to my gate, which I will ingest as I listen to your Matrix propaganda and destroy you. Because I deserve chocolates if I have to put up with you. I'm an extremely successful man, and my time is valuable. And you're wasting mine, yours, and everybody else's. So if you're gonna come along with your extremist ideas, I would at least sleep better at night if you were feeding some poor innocent children somewhere in the world. But you have no interest in doing any good for the earth. You're only interested in spreading hate, unlike me who wants to do good things. Preach. So. Post my BBC interview, I've been contacted by the New York Times, CNN, the Clinton News Network. <laughs> the Clinton News Network. Oh my God, this dude, man. All of them. And they're all desperate to interview me because they understand the number of views it will get. Ah, I want to try now. I want to try now. And they all want to try a different version of the same aha moment. Not understanding because they're completely detached from reality that it's not an aha moment and nobody cares. They're not interested, they're not smart enough to look at the board of the chessboard and say, this isn't gonna work. Let's ask him questions people actually care about. They're not that smart. So if you wanna waste your time and mine, that's what it's gonna cost you. $50,000, I managed to procure meals at around 80 cents each, so we'll feed over 60,000 children for wasting an hour of my time, plus a box of chocolates. That is my fee from this point forward. That is one hell of a marketing plan, I'll tell you that. And the end result is feeding less fortunate people. And when they get up there to talk to him, he's gonna absolutely destroy them. Brilliant, man, absolutely brilliant. I will still speak to non-Matrix media outlets who are interested in the truth, interested in asking interesting questions that people wanna hear the answers to. I will still be available to do my own podcasts and tell the truth. But as long as legacy media retain their reputation as peddlers of extremist ideology, I no longer have any interest in promoting them and making them relevant. It's better we allow them to become irrelevant, which they are doing, through their own dishonest actions. Yes, they are, Andrew. And the sooner, the freaking better. I will no longer interact with any of you for free ever again. So... To the 64 journalists who have emailed me so far since the BBC interview, do you have $50,000 in a box of chocolates? Because I'm not interested in speaking to you for any other reason. I actually think I'm being quite kind only charging 50 grand. I should charge 200 grand, but I'm a nice man. And $50,000 will still feed a lot of children. I promise any legacy media outlet that pays me the fee can have an interview. And I also promise to provide full accounting and receipts to prove that that money goes directly to charity to feeding children in war-torn countries. Documentation always beats conversation. Show the receipts, Andrew. That's what I'm talking about, bro. But I will no longer allow the Matrix propaganda machine to infect the minds of innocent children by using my relevance to achieve interviews and get views they would never normally get to spread hateful propaganda. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. I love this. Don't let these people poison the minds of children. That's one sore spot that I got, man. And that's all he's doing is trying to help the young men in this world. But they want to keep us weak. They want to keep the young men weak. You know what I mean? I love his stance, man. If you can't afford me, you're going to have to go back to just lying about me without speaking to me. Because God knows the truth. I know the truth. Most of the world knows the truth. And I genuinely believe that Allah is the best of planners. And whatever happens to me, regardless of whether I am martyred, regardless of whether they put a bullet in my brain, I know what I have done is good for the world, and the things I will do will continue to be good for the world.
Interesting, he said the bullet in the brain part because he says it's always a three-step process when you go against the Matrix. Number one is they try to cancel you, and they did that. Number two, they put you in jail for no reason, they did that. And the third one is what he just talked about. You know what I mean? And he knows that's a possibility. That's why he, he leaves a legacy of all these things and actions and stuff he's doing because if something does happen to him, and God forbid that ever happens, <laughs> this guy's going to go down as a martyr. You know what I mean? All the things he's put out on, on social media and the, and, the, and the good charities and all the thousands of maybe hundreds of thousands or maybe a million men that he has earned, encouraged and helped out in their life. It's absolutely amazing what this guy has done, man. Get your checkbooks out or don't email me at all because there will be no compromise. I don't care what you try and do and say to goad me into an interview. You can lie about me all you want. It's, all, it's, all, it's what you do already. I'm not afraid of your lies. It's gonna cost 50 grand plus a box of chocolates. <laughs> now you see why I reacted to that video. Absolute legend, man. This guy, man, my God. There's not a lot of people on this planet like that guy, okay? When you have, because he says his, his net worth is over a billion dollars, and for him to sacrifice his life and them to try to ruin his life for it, it's it's uh, it's amazing, man. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to do here on this channel and, and on a very, very small um, level. Yeah, I hope that opens your eyes to a few things. Uh, I know Andrew Tate is a very divisive subject because a lot of you guys can't stand him. And I'm not telling you to like him or whatever. But in my opinion, my personal opinion, you got to respect the guy. You know what I mean? If you're new to my channel, again, my name is Jerry and I and I love freedom. As you can see in, my, in the title of my video, I'm, I'm all about the Constitution in the United States of America. Andrew Tate is an American that's living in Romania right now. And he's under house arrest unjustly. He has not been charged with anything. And just think about that if that was you or one of your family members. You know what I mean? Now, again, he, he's, he's got a lot of money. He's in a big mansion. He's fine um, until he goes to court or whatever, and we'll see what happens. But at any moment, they can come in and get him just for no reason. They've already shown that. And for him to still, and I was very interested to see what will happen when he came out, because at first he's been kind of quiet and stuff like that, but now he's getting back to his groove and stuff. And he's, he's very careful what he says, but I love it, man. I love that plan. He's knocking a couple of bird, birds with a couple of stones or one stone or whatever. Co yeah, a couple of birds with one stone. He's calling out the legacy media, number one. Uh, number two, he's telling his truth because whatever lies they come out with, he records the whole video so he can show you to you in full context. And that's the thing, in full context. Three, he's feeding less fortunate children all around the world. And four, he's exposing the legacy media. I mean... <laughs> Come on, man. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So again, if you guys are with me and you guys support what he's doing and support our basic rights here in the world, not just America, but I, I do take care of home first in, in America. As you can see, I'm an American and all these bars you see are, are one ounce states of America. I like you to help me support my channel. You can do that in a few ways. If you like to donate, because I'm not working a job, I'm doing this full time to grow this channel, to grow this community to pass on the message. It's not about me, it's about the message, it really is. And we need to end the legacy media. We need to stop these evil people from doing what they're doing to us, the young people and the children. And to taking our basic rights, our, our second amendment rights, our first amendment rights. And if you wanna help me spread this message, uh, please, you can do a few things. You can donate to the channel with the links in the description below. Uh, but if you don't have a lot of money right now, because I know inflation is bad, uh, I really appreciate you watching the video and give me a view. I really appreciate that. But to take it a step further, you can hit the like button if you like the video, only if you like it, like I said. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Hit the notification bell um, because I'm shadow banned here on YouTube. When you tell the truth, that's what they do. I have many people that I'm subscribed to that are truth tellers that I don't even get their notifications. Why? Because they don't want the information to come out. And also to help make it, you know, to help spread the channel and, and beat the algorithms, you know, leave a comment in the comment section below. I really appreciate it. So again, guys, I thank you so much. Uh, Andrew Tate, if you just so happen to stumble across this video, man, I'm with you, brother. And I love you, man. Uh, you're doing great work. And I love each and every one of you. And we need to be behind stuff like this because I, I give the charities too, not to his level, obviously. And I, and I keep that private of what I do and stuff like that. But that that really touches me too 
talk to young men about being strong, best version of themselves, giving to charities and uh, being a good human being. That just that just checks off all the boxes for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love each and every one of you. God bless you and your family. God bless this country and Andrew Tate. God bless you for all your work and dedication and uh, sacrifices you've made for, for all the young men around the world. There's nothing desirable about a guy like Andrew Tate. He's unattractive physically, mentally, emotionally. He's a bad guy. You shouldn't be inspired by him. Even though you punch with your hands, a good fighter is all from the legs. If you have good legs, good footwork, if you move well, like, like Floyd doesn't get hit. It's not because of his head moving, it's because of his body. So boxing stances, left foot forward, right foot back. Perfect technique, your heels don't touch the ground. It's all in the balls of your feet. So it's like calf activation. Because when your heels are off the mat, you're the most springy, you're the most bouncy. You can move quick, right? Your right hand is going to go up and it's going to guard your chin. Your left hand is going to be out a little bit. You're going to move forward. And the very basic premise of boxing is find him with your jab. As soon as you find him, you throw a power shot. That's boxing. Enjoy everything. Enjoy the sunshine through the window as you sit in traffic. Because there's a whole, I've been to a lot of places, I've seen a lot of things where people would do anything to be you. A bad day is coming for all of us, right? For all of us in our future, there's a 100% probability that either we're gonna die or someone we love is gonna die. You will have a reason to be upset soon enough. That's a fact. Why are you doing it in advance? Like nothing, nothing's wrong today. Oh, well, you're a flat tire. Boo hoo. People are so emotionally reactive to, to low level stuff. I don't know how long I'll live, but I know that I'm going to enjoy myself every single second. What do you say to young men who come to you for advice, who feel lost, who don't really know where they fit into society? I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good hearted and God fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Thank you guys so much. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love.